<clears throat> All right, guys. Imagine that. It is another cold, gray, gloomy, rainy, depressing, yuck night here in the end times. At Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a gloomy Tuesday night, October 4, 2022. And uh, I just couldn't resist this little story. Uh, which is a funny one, making the rounds on the mainstream media. Oh, but before I get into it, I do want to send out a big thank you to uh, my kind-hearted uh, tribes member, Marty Knudsen. Marty Knudsen, uh, <laughs> the ephemeral, enigmatic Marty Knudsen, who actually showed up at, uh, at the Doomer Shindig only to have an unfortunate, unfortunate encounter with Osama's brownies, uh, which kind of <laughs> anyway, Marty, uh, those brownies, I, I tell you, Marty can tell you a story or two about Osama's brownies, but despite that, it was uh, pleasant finally getting to meet the enigmatic Marty Knudsen, who actually lives in North Dakota, I believe, but I really want to thank Marty Knudsen for becoming uh, far and away uh, my number one uh, patron on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Humpty Dumpty Tribe really does still have a Patreon page, believe it or not, and uh, <laughs> I think Marty is about three-fourths of it, but Dude, I really, really appreciate the kindness and anybody who has ever supported uh, the Humpty Dumpty Tribe Patreon page or the Collapse Chronicle, or even the Sancho Panza. I don't know if uh, you guys realize that Sancho Panza still has a Patreon page. I, is your Aunt Sandy still supporting you? I think, I think Sancho Panza has four patrons left. So, uh, Sancho Panza's mission, what is your mission? Spreading, spreading love and joy throughout the universe. Sancho used to get me over 200 bucks a month. That was from Archangel Michael, who sent this little dog. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so... Uh, you can go on Patreon if, if, if you don't want to support me, but you want to support this little dog. Uh, you can go on the Sancho Panza Patreon page and support the little dog. But anyway, I do appreciate it, Marty and all the rest. But anyway, guys, I don't know. If, if you haven't seen that video, th this was the number two story on planet Earth this morning, according to... According to Yahoo News about these uh, the, these dudes cheating at that fishing tournament, that big fishing tournament up on Lake Erie uh, this weekend. I, I mean, it, it, we're talking some serious fucking dough. I, I mean, these guys have, uh, you know, they've earned like $400,000 over the past couple of years that they started winning all of these fishing tournaments. And it just, it, you know, it just clearly these guys were cheating. So they won this big-ass fishing tournament. And, and people just said finally they're calling the bullshit on it. And uh, so, you know, the judges sliced open the, the, the bellies of the fish <laughs> I would play the video, but I'm too nervous of getting a copyright strike. But it's easy to find. It, just just go on YouTube and put in fishing tournament cheaters getting their balls busted or whatever. It is really fucking funny. And, and, and it's, a, it's a wonder these fuckers didn't get killed. You know, they have riled up these rednecks. And they should. These motherfuckers. Uh, so anyway, I, I, of course, reading this uh, story, I did have to read it with a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of guilt and shame because Hambo Little Dale, Hambo Little Dale, I must say, uh, 
has entered one fishing tournament in his entire life, and he won it. He won the fishing tournament. This was in Canada uh, when I was 20, 20 years old. Good God. So 43 years ago, my brother and I and some other folks went up to Ontario to uh, go fishing up there in Canada. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it wasn't team fishing. There were six of us. So we each spent $20 in the pool, but we were all fishing for ourselves, so it wasn't teams. So, you know, I was always in the boat with my brother, so, you know, he couldn't cheat and I couldn't cheat. So it was the very last day. We, were, we went up there for like 10 days, and it was the very last day of the fishing, uh, of, of us going fishing, and uh, I was not in the lead, so, uh, you know, the night before, you know, the winner was like already claiming his, his take, and, but we weren't leaving until the next day, so I got up at the crack of dawn, by myself. That's a whole nother story what happened during the night about the tree falling on my brother's van while I was asleep in the van and the and the guys running the resort they come out and find the tree on the van and uh, and I can hear him like it just crushed the top of his van. If we if we get rid of this tree now He'll never know, and I'm sleeping inside the van to get away from my brother's snoring. And so I wait for them to pull the tree off, and I come popping out of the van and go, gotcha. So my brother ended up getting the insurance settlement from the, uh, from the, the, uh, the fishing, the fish camp. Uh, to you know, for the roof of his van, and you couldn't see the dent, so he went off to Vegas with that money and ended up winning seven hundred dollars at the kino table. Of course, he didn't give me one fucking penny. But anyway, I, I digress. So it was that day. So I was up early uh, because of that damn fi that damn fish, that damn tree falling on my brother's van. Uh, <laughs> so I get up, and everyone's still asleep. And I say, fuck it, this is my last chance to uh, head out. So I go out by myself, and I have no witnesses. And what do you think happens? I catch this nice damn fish, and I'm thinking, this fish has got to be close. I can't remember. It was, I'm trying to beat about eight, somewhere around eight pounds, something like that. So I catch this damn fish, uh, you know, in the 11th hour and 59th minute, and uh, I'm looking at this thing. Uh, it was a northern pike, is what it's called, a, a northern pike. And uh, I'm looking at this goddamn thing and thinking, I've got to be within ounces of winning this fucking thing. And, uh, you know, I'm looking all around, nobody around. And uh, so I paddle over to this gravel bar. Uh, it was it was kind of foggy. It, you know, you couldn't see what anyway. So I'm in the damn fog on the lake, and I paddle over to <laughs> to this gravel bar. You know, right out of the cartoon. Uh, <laughs> get a these fucking things have nasty teeth. I get this pair of pliers. <laughs> And I'm opening this fish's mouth, and I'm dropping gravel down and stuffing fucking gravel down <laughs> down this fish's throat, thinking I'm gonna get my fucking ass killed if I get caught. And uh, I come, uh, you know, I've come cruising in, and the rest of the guys are just getting out of bed and and making breakfast and stuff, and I come out there with that fish and the guy who thought that he'd won the hundred and twenty dollars looking at my fish and, and he goes he goes no he goes 
I'm the winner. And I said, we got to get out the scales. I, I, I said, and he goes, clearly my fish is bigger than your fish. And I said, you know, let the scales decide. So we went over to the scales and uh, <laughs> hung that fucker up. And I took it, what was, I mean, it was like three ounces <laughs> that I won. And I, uh, and I damn, uh, took that $120. Oh God, I took that fish, I took that thing all the way back to Atlanta. And I remember being in the kitchen with my mother. You know, my mother is, is more honest than Edith Bunker. And I said, Mom, I said, I've got something to, uh, <laughs> I got to come clean. She goes, what? Well, so I said, watch this. And I, <laughs> and I gutted that fish and all of this, all of this fucking gravel falls out of the kitchen sink. And she's like, what the hell <laughs> is that? And, uh, she tried to be, uh acted like that she was uh, ashamed of her son, but she thought it was fucking funny. Cause it was fucking funny. It was fucking hilarious. That's what it was. You know, 120 bucks. And but these guys, man, I, I, I mean, $400,000. And there, you know, there's no way, I, I mean, obviously, you know, they've been kicked, they, they'll never be in a fishing tournament again, but uh, all that money they've already pocketed, I guess, uh, is, is theirs to keep, because what the fuck are you going to do? There's no way. It won't surprise me if these one of these fuckers ends up dead, man. They have pissed off a lot of rednecks. Uh, they better be putting up the damn for sale sign and getting the hell out of upstate New York. I think uh, somewhere around Buffalo, New York. Anyway, get out there and stuff gravel down your fish while you still can. This little dog, you were not there for that adventure. Anyway, I just thought that was a funny story. So, uh, <laughs> don't trust anybody. You know, goddamn humans. If we think we can get away with it, we will try to get away with it. I wonder what other stories I can think of <laughs> to own up. That one is a tame one. Bye, guys. Sandy and Jennifer have a show coming on. All right. I think they do. Bye, guys.